Welcome to the Guiding Cooperation Podcast. I'm Dr. Chelsea. Today we are talking about kids and screens and the number one piece of advice that I give parents around screens all the time. And that piece of advice is to change the frame with which you see children and screens. The frame I want you to use is be curious and not furious. Seriously. If you approach your child with the frame, be curious, not furious, you're going to stop the whining, the yelling, the frustration on your part in its tracks and stopping your own frustration so that you can meet your child where they are and help them figure out how to be with screens in a way that works for them, for you and for your family is the number one way that you can preserve, nurture, and support your relationship with your child so that they can thrive in a world where there are lots of screens. Let's talk a little bit more about why we put our children on screens. Most of us are putting our children on a screen so that we can get a hot second for a break. Now, this is mostly true for our youngest families who are overstimulated, touched out. It's just all too much. The reason you use a screen in those kinds of moments is often, I need a break. It's not actually about your kids. And I want you to hold that the most important thing for your children is that you show up in a regulated way. And so if you are using screens to get your own regulation dialed in, I want you to give yourself some grace. Our children most, more than anything, need a well-regulated adult with whom to process and learn about the world. That's you. You're the well-regulated adult for your children most of the time. And that's not to say you have to be regulated all the time. Of course, being dysregulated is part of the human experience. And when you become dysregulated, you can talk about that with your children. And I might even say something like, wow, mama had a volcano moment. I just, I I was hot and I was tired and I was hungry and then this happened and everybody was talking and then the dog started barking and my volcano erupted. I'm still learning. I bet tomorrow I'll remember when it feels like my volcano is starting to bubble. I can take a walk. I can go to yoga. I can drink some water. I can call a friend. Then you're modeling to your child. Yeah, we all have these moments and I can take care of myself. You don't have to take care of me. I'm going to take care of myself and I'm going to help you learn how to take care of yourself in these kinds of moments. Then you have a template for when your child has a meltdown. But back to screens. Sometimes we use them when we feel touched down, like we need a second to do something. And if you're using a screen in order to get a handle on yourself, that's really important. It's really, really critical for your child's brain and nervous system development for you to be able to hold on to yourself. And so what I would say to you is, okay, set some limits around it. And use that time in a way that is nurturing to you. Don't do it all day long. Be critical about your screen use. Interrogate what you want in your family. Think about who your children are being. Consider whether screens are appropriate for them or not or how much and all of that good stuff. But at the end of the day, get your own regulation needs met. And sometimes you might need to do that when your children are with you and there's not another parent and you can't go to the beach then you might need to put a show on so you can get a hot second and cook dinner and they can, they're, you know, they're on a show. They're on the U- the boob tube, they used to call it. Okay, so give yourself grace where that is concerned um, and acknowledge that most of us are wildly under-supported. So very overstimulated mu- much of the time and most of us don't have a well-developed practice to take care of ourselves, nor do we have a village to take care of us. And so taking care of ourselves is a really critical part here. Now, when you have taken care of yourself, you can show up with curiosity, not furiosity. That's not a word, is it? But you can show up from a place of curiosity. So if you're seven-year-old, you've told four times to put the iPad down and put the iPad away, and then you go into their bedroom, and yet once again, they're on the iPad hiding under the covers or in the closet. Most of us are going to go to, what are you doing? I've told you to do that a bunch of times. And you know what that response does? That response breaks the connection. And your connection to your child is sacred. 
It is a sacred connection. I want you to hold it and protect it above all else because it is inside of that sacred connection between you and your child that your child is going to learn how to show up in this world, that your child is going to practice and grow their capacity that, to be resilient, that your child is going to learn how to be in this world with screens, a thing that many of us don't know how to do. Many of us struggle with being on our phones, with feeling addicted to social media, with um, constant texting, with zoning out when our kids are asking us for stuff and we're on our phone. We struggle with it too. So have a little grace for your kids. And when you go in there and you find them on the iPad after you've told them to get off the iPad a hundred times, that is the moment to be curious and not furious. Okay, be curious. What does my child need in order to cooperate here? That sets you up to be a helper, to be like, okay, I got it. I'm going to help my kid through this moment. And when you can help your child cooperate with the family rule, and we're going to talk about rules in just a second, you hold the relationship sacred. You can still have boundaries and rules and practices and limits with a sacred relationship. In fact, you're going to have an easier time holding a firm limit, holding a boundary, putting rules in place that protect everyone if and when you hold your relationship with your child sacred. So when you go in there, I want you to bend down. I want you to look them in the eye. And I want you to say, wow, I was thinking iPad was done. Let me sit here with you. I'm going to watch with you for one more minute. Okay. And I'm going to put a timer on it. Minute is all done. Hand gesture. We're going to go five, four, three, two, one. At this point in time, I am so close to my child that no matter what happens, the iPad is going away. I got my hand around, my arm around the kid. I may be even touching them as I count down five fingers, four fingers. I'm stroking their hands. They know I am there and I am bringing a deep gentleness. I have joined. I am watching the last 30 seconds. Timer goes off. Then I'm going to count down. And then I'm going to say something like, wow, iPad is all done. Closing iPad, and I'm going to help the child close it. Okay, now iPad goes up on shelf or to charging shelf or to the off basket, whatever you call it. So there's my practice. I'm setting up the environment so my child is going to be successful. Now, some of you are going to say to me, I'm going to do that, and my child's still going to have a meltdown. That's okay. It is okay. I am 100% okay if I have supported my child through a transition like that and they have a meltdown. It's okay. If they melt down, I might say, wow, you really wanted that iPad. Mm, So tough. Wow. Okay, you can have empathy and still hold the limit. And that is important here. Now, We know that this has gone down a bunch of time, whether it's an iPad or an asking for a show or um, siblings fighting over who gets to pick a show. And so now you need a plan and your plan needs to align with your beliefs about screens and media. Of course, there are recommendations. And just last week, the Surgeon General came out with a pretty uh, significant negative recommendation around screens as basically like, do it less be really present and be really careful because social media, we don't actually know what the impact of social media is and and out of an abundance of caution. And because there are some possibly really tricky negative things that could happen for children on social media, restrict heavily, be very, very careful. And it's interestingly, the response to that was just fascinating because we have got communities of young people coming out and saying, you know what, I am a young person who identifies as queer, who identifies as feminist, who was ostracized at school, and I found my community on social media, and that's why I'm alive today. 
So you have to hold together both the negative and the positive, right? And really evaluate what's happening for your particular child. But we do want to have rules and limits that supports our children to know how to show up. If I have no rules, but then I lose my mind because my kid won't get off a screen, it's they, I never help the child to cooperate. I set them up for failure. I set myself up for failure because I thought in my mind, I don't actually believe that it's okay to watch hours and hours of YouTube. Um, and then when I discovered my child doing that, I felt some dissonance because like, here's this thing happening in my home and my family that I don't believe in. And then I blew up. That's not sacred. That ruptures the connection. You're likely to have that problem again and again and again, because you've not done any teaching. So let's set a rule that works around screen time. Now your rule should be positively stated. That means that it does not include the words, no, not don't and stop. So the rule is not no TV unless you're kind. The rule is not, you can't watch TV until homework is done. Those are not rules that will work. A rule that works could be something like first homework, then show. It could be something like on Wednesday's sister picks and on Thursday's brother picks the show. It could be something like we do Friday night movie night and during the week we choose other activities. Okay, so you can see how I'm setting it up. It could be um, during mealtime, all the, all the phones go into the charging basket. Okay, then the boundary that that rule is going to support is going to be something like my boundary is I want us to connect during dinner time. I need connection. The rule that supports that boundary is phones in the charging basket. And that includes the parents. Your phone's got to go in the charging basket too. So think about the one or possibly two rules that you could have around screen time. Okay. They could be like, I would encourage you to think about at least one screen time per week that you're doing it together. One thing that we know so clearly from the research is that higher quality screen experiences have a higher level of interactivity. So what do I mean by interactivity? I literally mean the child has the opportunity to interact. That could be opportunity to interact with another person on the other side of the screen, like grandma. It could also be, um, a game where the child is playing. Um, it could also be you and your child sitting down and watching a show together and then talking about it. Maybe you pause the show and have a conversation about what is actually happening on the show. Some of the questions that I would ask children in those kinds of moments are like, who wrote this? Why do you think they write, wrote it that way? Who didn't write this? What kinds of stories get written? What kinds of stories don't get written? What kinds of characters do we see? What kinds of characters don't we see? Who's here? Who's missing? Where did the story come from? What do you think about this story? If you were going to write a different ending, what ending would you write? So now you're engaging your child critically about whatever it is that they're watching. If you're watching Paw Patrol and you say to your child, who's here and who's not? Maybe they're going to notice that almost all those little doggies are boys and there's only one girl. I think maybe there's two girls now. Um, and then I'm going to have a conversation about that. Why do you think that is? Would you do it differently? I'm not looking for any kind of answer. I'm looking to facilitate the child just thinking about the show in a really active way. Would you do it differently? Maybe you only like boys. Maybe you would make a show of all boy dogs. Maybe you would make a show of all girl dogs, right? So you can be in conversation about that. If you've got a younger child, like watching Paw Patrol, maybe you're going to get some of those little doggies and you're going to play with them. You might do the restoring, the critical thought through play. If your child is slightly older, maybe you're going to write about that show or movie. Maybe you're going to download a stop motion animation app onto your phone and make a short little stop motion animation. There's lots of ways to critically engage, but that kind of interactivity where you're co-viewing and then you're communicating with your child or offering opportunities in play to think through the content are very high quality. Now, we see interactivity in a lot of shows for young children where the person on the show will be talking and then there'll be like a space. And the idea is that the child talks back. So like Miss Rachel might say, mama. 
And then we're looking for the little child to say, mama, there's a repetition, right? So that's going to be, of course, higher quality than just like people talking, but Miss Rachel is not interacting directly with your child. So I would have you watch that together. And then you're the thing that your child is interacting with. Okay. So interactivity is super duper important. Um, and higher quality screen time is going to have more interactivity. One way to think about it. So you've got your rule. You're going to prioritize high quality interactivity in the show or game that your child is playing. You're going to try to do some co-gaming, some co-playing, some co-watching. You're going to hold that even when you're doing that, there may be times when you need to regulate and you're going to have grace for yourself. Okay, my kids are on a show or a movie right now because I need a little space. And I, I can have some grace for myself on that. Okay, so have some grace. Be in an open communicative relationship with your child. Now, if you give the rule to your child, say you make a rule that is one show while mama cooks dinner or one show after after ice cream or first homework, then games or whatever, then stick to it. It is important that your rule be clear and consistent. Oftentimes the reason these things don't work is because we're not actually consistent. So when you're considering what your rule is going to be, I want you to think about what you can hold. What is actually going to work for your family that aligns with your beliefs so that you can come from a place of curiosity when things go a little bit awry. That place of curiosity is going to really support and nurture the relationship with you. Now, if your child is sneaking or lying about screens, again, place of curiosity. If you get big and start to yell, you're going to disrupt that sacred relationship and it's going to start to get tough. Okay, so instead of getting big, say, hmm, first to yourself, why is this happening? Why this behavior and why now? Why are they sneaking the iPad? Why are they lying about who they're calling? Why? Right? That is the question that you have to answer. And you can't, you're not going to solve any behavior problem until you have effectively answered that question. So start there and you might need to ask yourself why even like two or three times. Why, why, why? As you come to your screen time plan, make sure that there are some times of day that you and your children, your family unit have without screens. I would suggest to you mealtime. Okay, during mealtime, make a rule. The rule during mealtime is probably something like screens into charging basket or charging station. All the screens go to that place, and during the mealtime, you're connecting. It's important to set that expectation. So if you've not been doing it that way, it's okay. You can say to your children, you know what? We are going to do it a new way. We're going to start in three days or next week, whenever you want to start this weekend. So we have a couple more days of the old way. That's where we have phones at the table. And then on this day, and I would print out a calendar and have that on a calendar. And when we get to this day, we're going to do the new way. The new way is insert your rule. The new way is at mealtime, phones go to the charging station. Okay. So prime your child every day until you get to that day. Now, when you get to that day, it's all in the presentation. Wow, it's the new way day. Today is the day where phones all go up to the charging station. And then, yeah, you remember, you're doing it. We're figuring it out together. You are really in this with your children. So act like it. Involve them in the, in the conversation. Be clear about what the rule is. And in order to be clear about what your rule is, you got to get clear around your own beliefs and boundaries around screens. So I would encourage you to start with something like my belief is that as a family, we connect. That is one of my beliefs. Um, and I want that to happen at least a couple times a day. So one way I'm going to support that belief 
um, is by making a boundary on around mealtime. Remember, just like your rules, your boundary should be positively stated. So my boundary is during mealtime, I need connection. Then I get to put a rule in place. So do you see we're going from belief to a boundary, and now you're getting a rule to support the, the boundary. And the rule is going to be during mealtime, phones go to charging station. Okay, so you're going to have to do a little prep work. You might have to install a charging station, get a charging basket, hang up a charging shelf, um, and then I'm going to put a calendar up so my kids know it's coming. I'm going to make sure we, here we go. We're going to try it again. Okay, so you're going to go on a cycle like that. Okay, make sure that there's um, a lot of positive attention on success. So if you do this, if you go for the meal thing, and it's kind of tricky. You can praise your kids for the intention. Wow, you remembered today's the day we're starting. We're going to figure it out. So what's key here is that you are communicating that you believe that your child is going to get it. Our children need to know again and again and again from us that we believe that they are going to get it. And that is a feeling. We communicate that feeling with our words, with our rules, by coming to our children with curiosity, right? Um, but it's a feeling. It's a felt sense of mom, dad, other caregiver, know that I can do this. That is a gift that you cannot underestimate its power, okay? Just knowing, like, mom and dad know I can do this. It feels in the family like this is what we're doing. This is a neutral thing. Yes, it's a shift, but here we go. This is what we're doing. So be firm. Don't like sort of present your rule and then kind of waffle around it. Present your rule as the thing that you actually know is the best thing for your family. Talk with your partner ahead of time and think about your belief, your boundary, and then your rule. Just do one at a time. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk to you about how to diagnose a screen time problem. This is going to be for those of you who have a child who is constantly melting down about screens, constant whining. But even for you, I want you to start with what is your belief, what is the boundary, and what is the rule. Now, there are some strong recommendations coming out of the CDC and from um, the Attorney General. And those recommendations basically boil down to this. Real little, like under two, don't do it. Try to have no screens. Get them out of like, turn off the sports. Like doesn't need to be running in the background. Um, if you are watching something with your under two year old, like you're watching Miss Rachel or you're watching Daniel Tiger or something like that, make sure that you are engaged with them so you can get up and move with them. You can make the sounds and dance with them, but, uh, really try to avoid putting your child on a screen at that age. Now, if you are at wit's end and not managing your life and cannot parent and you really need help and you don't have anyone to go to, I would rather you put your under two-year-old on a screen than you yell at them, scream at them, or otherwise, you know, get really ugly, right? So if you're at that breaking point, then do what you need to do to get regulated yourself. Okay. Younger kids, keep it to like under an hour a day. Um, I would say keep it to 30 minutes a day and probably not even every day. We don't want our kids to be on screens for hours and hours and hours. This is, these are our preschoolers, early on elementary schoolers. Um, we want to make sure that they are having high quality experiences. So more interactivity if possible. Um, watch the shows that your kids are going to watch and make sure that they align with your family values before your kids watch them. As they get older, involve them in recreating some of these things, whether that's through play or through writing or through making a little video themselves. Make sure you've got the parental controls on. Okay, involve your child. Think about at least once a week a co-viewing, co-playing, or co-gaming experience. As your children get older, up into the tweens and teen years, make sure that you know what is happening. Limit social media as long as you can. However, notice what your child is using social media for. 
if they are using it to connect with other young people, nurture that. We want our children to connect with their peers. We want our children to see themselves in their friends and in groups of people that they hang with. So recognize what they're doing what they're doing with it, focus on creating and be in conversation with your child around social media, media use, movie watching, show watching the whole time. I'll be back live tomorrow. Tomorrow's podcast will focus on diagnosing a screen time problem and what to do if you do diagnose a screen time problem in your family. I'm Dr. Chelsea. I hope you're following along guidingcooperation.org. Take good care.